Uh, we had a situation yesterday where we had to constitute the Rules Committee, uh, but because of, uh, of some of the activities on the floor, uh, two of our members uh, weren't put back on the committee immediately. I had not had a chance to talk to them. I had not had a chance to talk to our members. Uh, but this morning, uh, I told the members the same thing I'm, I'm saying here. Uh, we're going to have a family conversation, which we had this morning, about bringing our team together. All right, that was Speaker John Boehner earlier today. Now, he apparently is taking revenge against conservatives who tried to have him removed as Speaker. Now, Florida Congressman Dan Webster, he got 12 votes for Speaker in yesterday's vote. And fellow Floridian Richard Nugent, well, who supported him, were both kicked off the influential House Rules Committee. Here with reaction to this much more is the one and only great one, the Mark Levin is with us. Um, you know, it seems to me that the, the opposite should happen, that Speaker Boehner it was going to meet with President Obama next week, but Mark should go to these conservatives and say, let's talk. What's the problem? What can we do? Where is it that you think that I'm failing as speaker? And what can I do better? And how can we work together against the radical Obama agenda? Why not handle it that way? Why do it this way? Well, why not talk to Obama and Pelosi and read the way he talks to uh, conservatives who uh, think he's done a lousy job as speaker? As a matter of fact, Sean, uh, those 25 patriots who didn't vote for him for speaker are in line with the vast majority of the Republicans. Pat Cadell did this huge poll, and as you know, uh, by profession, he's a pollster. 60% of Republicans in this country, obviously outside the Beltway, do not want John Boehner as speaker. And about 85 or 90% of the Republicans in the House do. And several of those freshmen who said they would not vote for Boehner as leader did. Very cynical. And they're dissembling. Let me just tell you this. Under John Boehner, he has adopted uh, Nancy Pelosi's policies. The members don't get to read these massive omnibus bills 72 hours in advance. They're not putting legislation through subcommittees and committees so members know what the hell's going on and the American people can participate in the process. The entire summer, while he was leading these, these, these re-election efforts and so forth and so on, he was working a back deal with Obama to pass the biggest spending bill in American history and to fund every penny of Obamacare. Do you know what the Boehner legacy is right now, Sean? In the last four years, he's been the biggest spending, biggest borrowing, most profligate speaker in American history, and that includes more than Nancy Pelosi. You know, it seems that this is pretty clear, that the message is that if you listen to your constituents and you vote your conscience, which I thought Republicans would like their fellow Republicans to do, that there's going to be a, a, a heavy price to pay. Um, is there any way to rectify this? Matt Salmon of Arizona said if, the ba if Boehner continues this, there's going to be a massive rebellion against him, and he voted for Boehner. What do you think should happen? Yeah, well, it's too bad he and about four or five others didn't follow the lead of the 25 Patriots because then Boehner would have gone to a second round and maybe he wouldn't be conducting himself this way. Here's the problem, Sean. We conservatives, we Republicans, we go to the ballot box, we give the massive majorities. We throw out Pelosi in 2010. What do they do? Nothing. We go back in 2014, we give them an even bigger massive majority. What do they do? Go after the conservatives. Here's another problem. We control Republicans and conservatives, more state legislatures than any time in modern history. So they go back when they have these gerrymandering uh, uh, matters that come up. They make these Republican members even more comfortable. And so we get more of the same in Washington. So while we think we're voting to reverse course, to, to, to stop Obama, to embrace the Constitution, look at what's going on. Yeah, what is Boehner doing today? Has he given one thought? on how we reverse Obama's unconstitutional conduct? Has he given one thought about the debt, which is so high it's unbelievable? Do you know the Social Security Disability Insurance Fund at the end of 2016, two years, is broke? Boehner got a letter from the Social Security Administration telling him that? These aren't serious people. And what's going to happen is if they continue to do this clown car stuff, to empower themselves, to surround themselves with cronies, it is going to backfire one day. The Republican Party won a big election. But you know what's interesting? Substantively, at its core, it's weaker than I've ever seen it going into the 2016 presidential election. You know, as you talk about all these issues, there are tools available, constitutional um, powers that they have. The power of the purse, for example. You know, you talk about the increase in the debt and the deficits. I think what conservatives like you and myself have been saying, use that power. 
there seems to be an inordinate fear that they will be blamed, that they might be some type of retribution. Isn't it just the opposite? Doesn't taking a bold stand, stop robbing our kids, doesn't that end up helping them at the ballot box? Isn't that better politics? Yes, because politics isn't about whether we can do something today or tomorrow. I often hear it said, we've got to do what's possible. No, you've got to effect events. You've got to make the case to the American people over and over and over again. So when 2016 comes, 2018, 2020, you're in the ascendancy. You're moving the trajectory rather than on defense constantly. These guys don't make the argument. You want to know why, Sean? You want to, you want to know the nuts and bolts of this? The Republican Party today is not a conservative party. The Democrat Party, as I've said to you before, despises America's heritage and principles. That's what Obama means by fundamental transformation. The Republican Party won't defend America's principles, and it has become too cozy with the Chamber of Commerce, with the donor class, and with all those people that have their special interests. They go home and campaign one way, then they go to Washington and immediately reverse course. All right, the great one, Mark Levin, nationally syndicated radio host. Thanks, Mark.